All right, Kevin, how's it going, man? Good, dude. Good to be here, man. Yeah, well, thanks for, uh, appreciate you hopping on and, and doing this. You're one of my busiest uh, clients. I do appreciate the time. Um, why don't we just quickly start with, you know, who you are, what you do, where you're from? Yeah, so my name is Kevin Weinbarger. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm a uh, producer and promoter. Awesome. So for those of you who don't know Kevin, Kevin runs arguably one of the best uh, Spotify promoter, not only Spotify, but real legit promotion companies um, at the moment specializing in, in Christian artists, but perhaps expanding in the future. Um, and that's been kind of cool because, you know, you're in a slightly bit of a different situation. I mean, we obviously market to producers. You came in as a producer, but happen to have this other business. And we kind of pivoted a bit more of the attention to that recently. And, and just if someone's watching this, uh, Dark Label can help with, with all sorts of all sorts of offers. We have guys that come in that do, you know, coaching for artists, people that run promotions companies like you, artist developers, and then of course, you know, producers and mixers and things like that. Um, so you already had a business going, you know, I know you had went through another course, went through Six Figure Home Studio, got up, that helped yeah. you get up and running, you had some things going. Uh, what were some of the things you were struggling with or a goal that you wanted to hit that sort of prompted you to reach out to us and, and come on board? Gosh, dude, a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's, it's interesting. I think I was um, in many ways uh, successful, but frustrated um, in the sense that like every year I was, um, the clients that I was working with developing, um, just the results, the process was more and more meaningful. Things were more organized. I was making more money. They were having more success. I was getting booked out more. So like a lot of things were going in the right direction, but I think I, there was just a disconnect for me. I was really like not, I knew that there were some hurdles that like I was not going to be able to do with some course or anything like that. And honestly, a little bit of impatience, um, just trying to figure out like how to better serve artists. And I felt like go, doing courses, reading books, doing podcasts, I had done all that stuff and I still do that stuff. Um, but that it would be irresponsible to not have a one-on-one -on -one mentor that can help me really just like hone in stuff and having somebody that can call out crap. <laughs> that's like just, um, maybe not even, um, toxic, but just unnecessary in a business. I think that's been the, one of the biggest changes for me has been just letting old stuff off. That's like not necessary to serve clients. And, um, there's something that you said a few months into us working together that was like, you're always responsible to do the thing that brings the most value to your audience. And I think for me, I, out of, uh, you know, I think at least some sense of scarcity, um, I framed myself as a sales business where my goal was to offer a service that people wanted instead of a solution based business that offered solutions to problems whether that solutions found through my service or not and that was always my heart that was always my desire but it was disconnected from my follow-through because to be honest i had never seen a business function like that all the previous places i was employed at they didn't function like that and so a lot of this um business coaching was learning how to um establish a new culture in my business, which first had to begin by establishing new perspectives in myself. And so, um, which, you know, a lot of people don't want to pay thousands of dollars for perspective shifting, but gosh, like the impact that it's made on my artists, the impact that it's made on my personal, like, uh, life, not just even my bank account, which has grown a lot, but even just like my personal wellness and knowing like, I'm integrated with like what I actually desire to do. Like everything is, is tethered. Um, the peace that comes with that and the, the excitement that comes with that is epic. And, um, and then also being booked out is really nice too. <laughs> Love it, man. Yeah. And that's an important thing. We do these client interviews and people have different circumstances and, and reasons they come in and it's not always, it's not always because they, or like really struggling or have this problem, they just come in and, and do a program like this or, or work with, with us and, and the team just kind of to, to speed the process up and to do it with clarity and not waste time, you know? Um, yeah. So 
I mean, reason. like, it's it's interesting. Like, I already had a full time business, and um, and it was already like doing okay, but we would have never been able to um, we would have never been able to be a single income family. And uh, <laughs> by the time this video gets out there, we'll have announced already that we're expecting and uh you know having our first kid on the way and um and to think that like this process has enabled us to like be a single income family if we desire to that is like i i don't know how to explain how um grateful i am for that and um and that it was that it was something that was achieved through hard work like this this coaching wasn't like a handout or like learning cheats it was like actually like improving the value that you can offer somebody and um and that's changed lives and that's why my business has grown i don't i don't like i'm not doing like a bunch of ads and stuff like it's grown through referrals and and then also to see like i opened up this promotion company as a means of i have my own artistry um, and had gotten um, several million streams on my own work as an artist and saw that there was a huge need. And it's like, hey, we're responsible to do what gives the most value to your audience. And that's just a massive need in um, the Christian space, but really everywhere. Everybody's trying to figure out how to steward their releases, how to make them uh, meaningful, how to release something and be like, I gave my all and I fully showed up. And so to be able to help people with that intangible in a practical way has been um just really really cool to see like uh the impact that comes from this because i don't want to just be like a profitable business i want to be like an actually successful one and like achieve the mission um that, that like i'm in this thing for you you know yeah love it man we kind of went into a little bit and the next next question here is you know what what are things like now um i know a big piece of that is uh and and we don't have to share share exact numbers um, yeah, yeah but uh uh, we, in these interviews, it's whatever people are comfortable with and I, I get it. Um, but, uh, I think the big metric is you were making a certain amount and the goal this year was to, uh, uh double that amount. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> and, and did we do that? Yeah. So, um, on our first call and I, I found, found you through, um, a buddy of mine, I, I just think this is important to note. I had a friend of mine who I was in a band with in high school. His name's Wes Lauterbach and his studio is just annihilating. Yeah. He's, he's been like crushing it. And, um, but more than that, like the level of authority that he's had in his business was just something that I straight up lacked. And so I called him, I'm like, dude, like I'm in this weird conflicted spot. Cause my, it's not like my studio is dying, but it's just not like, I'm not, you know, in that level of authority that I would like to even apart from income, but like more income would be nice too. Cause I mean, realistically money can fix some problems, you know? Um, and, uh, and so anyways, um, when we had our first call, you were like, what, what would you want to make? And I, I gave a dollar amount that was five figures more than I made the previous year. And that was like, this is my safe number. This is my number that I would say, like, if I was, um, like daring. And then this is my number if I'm nuts and it's, you know, what, what is it right now? Like mid October. Yeah. And I've already surpassed that number. And that's insane to think about. And what's cool is like, it enables um, me to like not have to um, work, you know, 80 hours a week. Um, you know, right now, to be honest, I'm working close to that, but that's because I'm training assistants who are on my team now. And as a result, more value is being added. Um, and realistically, I know I can't work this amount of hours when the baby's here. So I'm trying to get all that out my system, but uh, obviously everything's in progress. But, um, and I think one other cool thing to note too is um, I thought that if I started offering promotion publicly, that my studio would die. Um, but ultimately, if your value is to be a solution based business and ultimately, uh, you know, to provide the most value to your audience, my whole mission as my studio is to help Christian artists grow in songwriting, production and promotion. And so what happened is they actually cross pollinated each other. One didn't swallow the other. They helped each other grow. And so when someone was growing through promotion, they were saying, wow, if I grew this much working with Kevin and this, it's likely that I should give this a shot and see what happens. And so. Um, you know, it's, it's been really, um, 
freeing to see like if you honestly if you do business the right way with the right motives like a lot of this stuff works out and when you're a results-based business where like what's being marketed is impact not trying to make a sale and um and solutions not like just another thing out in the cloud of noise like you cut through because it's actually changing lives and you have people that are evangelists for you so to speak in terms of your business um and so uh i work a lot less hard than i used to even though i still do work a lot of hours and we're still working on how to trim that down in calls but um but uh you know the progress that's been made in not even um what has it been like eight months i mean yeah, not really that year. long for the amount of growth that's happened so i'm um i'm really i'm really grateful and and learning every day and i've told a freaking lot of people about your coaching because it's been life-changing but uh but i just think for people that are producers that are wanting to steward what they're doing um that is definitely something to consider you know at least having a call and seeing if it's the right fit you know yeah man and that kind of perfectly leads into the into the last question it's almost like i told you what the questions would be before (laughs) Uh, (laughs) last one is just any any advice that you would give to someone who may be on the fence and thinking about coming into a into a coaching or consulting business development program in the music space, whether it's me or any, any of them, um, you know, what, what advice would you give them if they're a little, little, little scared? Yeah, I would say the worst case scenario of calling to decide if you are going to see if this is the right fit is that you spent a couple hours getting really valuable info and then just decided it wasn't the right fit. Like, that's what I did. I mean, honestly, like if it's not the right fit, then it's not the right fit. And that's cool. But like, we spent some time on the phone and that phone call was life changing. I mean, it just opened up a lot of questions that I had never asked myself. And I'm like a really introspective thinker. And I, you know, I journal, I've gone through a lot of therapy. Like, I think, I think about a lot of stuff pretty deeply, you know, um, but to, um, but to, you just opened up a lot of stuff in my life. And so, but I think if it's not the right time, you'll know. Like, I remember when I was an artist um, and, I, uh, and I worked with, I was talking with a producer about doing a record and he sat down and I was just really torn up, like whether it was the right time. And he's like, hey dude, like if it's not the right time, just like, just, just wait, bro. Like there's nothing worse than like getting into something that's like not the right timing. So I. I know that may seem a little bit abstract, but I think like most of you watching this probably know if it's time to like reach out and get clarity. And also too, just practically on a financial level, like if you're trying to do this as a means of income, um, then I think it's also worth reaching out. Uh, I was talking with an artist in the studio um, yesterday who was in from out of town and we were talking about how, when something's expensive, uh, but you you are um, absorbing the entire value of it, it's actually not expensive. Like I've spent thousands of, like I think I said this earlier, I've spent thousands of dollars on this coaching program, but I've made like tens of thousands more. And, um, and, and more than that, it's been like intangible things that aren't dollar signs, but like impact that's gonna like leave a legacy you know, which life is short. So it's like, let's do something that actually has meaning. And so, um, you know, for me, uh, those are all the things that like have helped me decide about whether or not, you know, to do coaching. And I think, um, you know, if, if this is something like that you're going to glean the value from and actually like apply what you're learning, you will get, um, you will get so much more value from it, but also you're going to be able to give so much value from it. And I think that's what it's really all about, you know. Love it, man. Well, hey, appreciate you doing this. And uh, I'll let you get back to work. Heck yeah, bro. Thanks. All right, thanks, man.